Welcome back to Headlines. You are not going to believe it, but Hunter Biden was indicted on tax charges. Can you believe it? <laughs> of course you can. We all can. Uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. We'll start by hitting a few points from this article from the Wall Street Journal. Um, Hunter Biden was indicted on nine tax charges on Thursday uh, by a grand jury seated in Los Angeles, California. California. So I'm sure if there is a jury trial for Hunter Biden in California, they're not at all going to be all donors to the Biden campaign. So I'm sure that <laughs> I'm sure that it's not at all going to be biased. Come on. They're going to be so Biden blue. It's crazy. The indictment included three felony charges and six misdemeanor tax offenses, adding new allegations to those included in the plea deal Hunter Biden reached with federal prosecutors earlier in the year that fell apart. This was a 56 page indictment saying that Hunter chose over a four year period not to pay one point four million dollars in federal taxes. And over that same period, he made seven million dollars. <laughs> that is a lot of money. But Hunter is very talented, uh, very sought after for his skills. So I'm sure that he totally earned that money. Let's just briefly touch on this plea agreement. It says here that the deal disintegrated during a July court hearing that exposed differences in how Biden's legal team and federal prosecutors interpreted the agreement. <laughs> That's a very nice way to put it by the Wall Street Journal. Can I just translate? Uh, the judge saw that it was a crazy sweetheart deal for Hunter Biden that was insane. And the judge said, hey, what is going on? You can't do this. And then it kind of fell apart. That's kind of when it fell apart because the judge called him on the fact that it was a crazy, crazy sweetheart deal. For some weird reason, that was that was anyway, that, that's why the deal fell apart. Now, here's something I found really interesting in the indictment. OK, talking about the money that Hunter was making um, with respect to Burisma. Uh, so it said here that Burisma agreed to pay. This is from the indictment. Burisma agreed to pay the defendant an annual salary of approximately one million dollars to be paid in monthly disbursement disbursements. In March of 2017, Burisma reduced his compensation to approximately five hundred thousand dollars a year. But he continued to serve on the board of directors until in and around April 2019. So why would Burisma have give him such a pay cut in March of 2017? He was making a million and then he gets half a pay cut down to 500,000 a year. Did it have anything to do with the fact that Joe Biden was no longer the vice president? Joe, Joe Biden was the vice president up until January of 2017. So he's not the VP anymore in January 2017. And two months later, Hunter gets a pay cut, half as much money. And then things continue to just go downhill. Now that's weird. Is that weird? Now this indictment had some pretty juicy stuff in it. Okay, so let's flip over to this article from the New York Post to just look at some of the itemized uh, things in it. It's crazy. So uh, over this period of time, he pulled out $1.6 million from ATMs. <laughs> that's a lot of cash. I mean, I know you, I mean, pe people usually only deal with cash if they're very legitimate, normal businesses. Um, so if you need $1.6 million, I'm sure that's not at all going to be very sketchy. You can, like if I stop by the ATM and I pull out a couple hundred bucks and my wife sees it, she's like, what did you need that for? Uh, I feel guilty. I mean, $1.6 million <laughs> over a period of that years. <laughs> Holy cow. I mean, he had to have been taking backpacks to the ATM every time he went. That's insane. That is a lot of cash. Um, 680 grand for payments to various women. Let's see, um, 188,000 on adult entertainment. Uh, it was, ins it's, it's crazy. Like who can spend that amount of money for escorts and adult entertainment? That's almost a million dollars. I mean, <laughs> How would he have the strength or energy for that? I mean, unless he was on Coke. During this period of time, that's when he was getting paid $7 million in this gross salary that he owed taxes on. And he was doing like all this stuff while he was making that kind of money. I mean, <laughs> come on, who's that good? I mean, unless he's like a Wall Street banker, then I would believe it. But other than that, now, some people are saying, OK, they're doing this because they're going to get rid of Joe Biden and he's not going to be running. 
That may be true, but I don't know if this is necessarily a step that shows that. Uh, from this article in the, in the New York Post, um, and this is from Jonathan Tur Turley, an attorney and professor at Was uh, George Washington University. Uh, this is a, he, this, he's saying here, the Hunter indictment designed, was designed specifically to avoid Joe Biden. Um, the steps taken by Hunter to evade taxes are impressive, but not nearly as impressive as the efforts of the Justice Department to evade any direct implications to his father, President Biden. In that sense, the indictment itself is a marvel of evasion. So this was carefully crafted to avoid getting Joe Biden involved. Not saying they might, they, they surely might decide to have somebody else run in his place. But right now, I think they're still, he might run. Just, I, I, otherwise, I don't know why they would have specifically crafted this so carefully to not implicate him. So why are they doing this now? Why is the DOJ doing this now? Um, I think it's certainly very calculated and they've thought this through with, you know, a bazillion people. And so this is definitely a strategy. I would not think, oh good, they finally want to serve justice. <laughs> Come on, grow up. No, this is, I wonder if they're thinking it's because Biden is suffering so much in the polls that they're thinking we need a sacrificial lamb and its name is Hunter. And so that's what they're doing. And then they'll take, you know, take the pulse of, of to see where the voters are and see, does that help? Do people think the DOJ is fair now? Also, I think a lot, there are more independents and people in the middle who are now thinking, hey, this is, there is like, the justice is not fair, that you've got two sets of rules, one for the Democrats and Biden and then one for everybody else. There are, there are probably enough people believing that, that this is part of their strategy to be like, we've, we need the sacrificial lamb to show them like, look, we're, we're playing fair. Look, we went after Hunter, right? So that's probably another part of their thinking. I also wonder if by indicting Hunter now, it would give him more of a reason to plead the fifth amendment because he's got all sorts of charges now that he has to deal with. And it would seem more reasonable for him to plead the fifth especially in front of Congress, so he doesn't have to testify in front of Congress. Um, I mean, I know he had some of the other uh, charges, but I'm just wondering if this could give him more of a reason, a PR reason that the public would be, okay, well, yeah, he's got so much against him now that that is a lot more understandable. I don't know. The one thing I don't think is that this is justice really being served. I think this is well thought out, calculated. It's by Biden's DOJ with Merrick Garland in charge. Come on, no. So uh, it will be interesting to see how this thing all shakes out. Thanks for watching Headlines. My name is Wes Austin, and we'll see you next time.